Welcome to Canada's podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Canada's podcast, the Atlantic Canada version, connection, hangout spot of all things happening amazing in Atlantic Canada. And then my guest today is an entrepreneur who I have been the luxury of having connected with a few years ago on LinkedIn or Facebook. I can't remember what it is, but just watching Ben's journey in the security space has really been one an interesting ride for me because of the way that he brands his business and moves his business forward, but uh, also the fact that uh, he is such a freaking professional in the way that he approaches all areas of his business. So uh, really pleased to introduce to you Ben Jolly. He's the owner of Jolcar Security System Services, sorry, and they're based out of uh, based out of Halifax, actually Dartmouth, the greater HRM, if you want to call it. And Ben, we're just uh, we're just really thrilled to have you on Canada's podcast today. Thanks for coming in, dude. No, great. Thank thank you. And, and, you know, we're excited. Just want to add on there as well, so I can stay in the good books. Uh, I'm partnered with my wife, uh, Michelle. So we both are both our owners. Um, Yeah. So we, we uh, we're, you know, it's worked out, you know, some some people have problems working with, with family or spouses or close friends, but it's, it's really worked out for us. Well, in our show, in the podcast, we don't really start off with anything that makes sense. So I want to dive into that. You brought it in. Michelle's part of your team. That's fantastic. Uh, talk about talk about how you, and there's a lot of, you know, husband, wife, uh, partnerships, whatever you want to call it. But when you two started uh, Jolcar Security, talk about that conversation of, uh, of one, what was, because you position yourself, you want to change the status quo when it comes to service levels within the, the security industry. So what was that conversation that you and Michelle had? And then how did you decide or what did you decide how you two were going to play roles and how it was going to, you know, how the dance was going to happen? Because it does cross the line into, you know, into the bedroom. Right. And so can you talk about those two things to get us started today? Yeah. So, I mean, Jalcar was really just started in the beginning. Um, So uh, we, I mentioned before I I was here, moved to Nova, to Nova Scotia for another job and and that, that company sold. Um, And then I I kind of found myself um, just doing other things and, and Jalcar was really started uh, to make a job for myself and Michelle. Got it. And we, we had some clients that I've dealt with in the past who said they really liked dealing with us and, you know, and, and said, why don't you guys start a security company? And we're like, okay, that's sounds like a great idea. And it's, it's employment for us. Cause we weren't yep. familiar with Nova Scotia and um, we had thought about moving back to Ontario, but we, so we started Jalcar. Um, so, but I wanted, I wanted, I didn't want to be like, all the other security companies, I tried to think of ways that we're going to be different. And right. one of those is our, we're going to be hands-on. No okay. matter how big we grow, you will still see Michelle and myself put on a uniform and we will actually work sites and we, we work events and we manage other sites. And, and so that was one of the things is our hands-on management. And that not something that we pass on because now we've grown, we've hired managers, we've hired supervisors and, you know, they're hands on, they're at the sites, they know exactly what our guards are doing so that when the client calls, you know, they, we know we're, we're, you know, we know how to deal with the situation. And, and a lot of uh, other organizations don't do that. Well, I find that a lot of companies, as they grow and they get bigger, you, yes, sir. You, a, you have a schedule, you might have, you know, a dozen sites that you have to schedule and they're just filling in the spots. They're just putting right. names in a box yeah. and they don't, necessarily they may care that i don't know but they just want to make sure that that shift is filled so right. they're building where we're i always wanted to be different i always wanted to make sure that the staff that we assign to a site lines up correctly with that site yeah you know, for, for example it could be a higher profile site that might be um you know if you want to say a rough neighborhood you could be dealing with with certain i'm not just going to throw anybody in there i'm going to make sure that this person has experience has the training um, is comfortable dealing with that, those kinds of situations. Uh, we we have some 
like I, I, we do a lot of senior homes and and uh, one on one resident sitting. Some some of our staff don't feel comfortable, you know, working with someone who might be suffering from some kind of dementia or, or mental illness. Right. We, we make sure there's the right people. Okay. And, um, and we're cool. also hands on with our clients. So yeah. um, and I'm trying to think of a good example. And one of them might be one of our nursing homes. Um, you know, one of the residents that we provide security services for, we know that person very well and probably on a weekly basis calls Michelle just to have a chat and, and telling us about all oh, that guard you have with me this week. He's wonderful. She's wonderful. You know, and, and our clients pick up on that and they, they, you know, they've never had that kind of little extra bit of service from, from yeah, a the special company. touches. Yeah. I, you know, I, uh, one of the ways when I work with entrepreneurs, I always encourage them to make sure they have a special touches part of their business, the honeymoon stage, if you want to call it that emotional connection that mm -hmm. makes it so special. And it sounds that's, 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 that's what you and Michelle decided on when you wanted to begin the business. How did you, what, what roles did you assume each one of you and how do you, uh, how do you, how do you work together on a daily basis? Cause like, again, this is, this is a regular occurrence with partners, life partners, best friend partners coming together and living. So what role do you play? What roles Michelle play? And uh, how do you manage the business operations together? Yeah. So, um, so we both have a background in law enforcement and security. Um, mine's probably a little more. I mean, I've been doing it ever since high school on. Okay. Michelle and I met in college. We were both wanted to be police officers. We met in a law enforcement program, but um, when we started Jal car, if you want to look at titles, you know, Michelle, we made, Michelle's the president, I'm the vice president, but we broke down where Michelle was dealing more with the staffing side and, and the yeah. office management, where I was dealing with more operational and finance. Got it. Um, and, and I guess in there, there's a little bit of sales and stuff. I, I, I never really liked sales until I got into a management role. And now yes. I, mean, I love going out and meeting with potentially new clients and just talking about our company. It just comes out so naturally now. I love um, it. And that's kind of where it's gone. We, we have an office manager, we have operations managers, but we still, you know, if you look at our, our chart, it's, you know, the president deals with this side of the company yep. and the vice president deals with that. Um, we don't like titles. Um, yeah, very we always tell our staff, we do the same job. We just have different roles. Yeah. And, and that's it, dude. Yeah, I, I love that lesson that you're bringing into everybody right now. And and you're right, titles are kind of more for people externally that they can say, "Oh, I, I, I you know, I, I, I want to meet with the president or whatever." But I yeah. love that you keep on them roles, 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 roles. It's roles and responsibility. Everybody's in equally as important. Everybody, I'm sure that your staff you feel the same way. Everybody's like a spoke in a bicycle wheel. Everybody's equally as important. And if one spoke breaks, it doesn't matter which one it is, it's going to impact the entire wheel that's moving forward. So, uh, so I love that. Can you talk about, can you talk about those beginning days? What was the first six months like? Was it, was you say you had a couple of customers already in what niche are you finding? Like I find that intriguing the nursing home space. Can you talk about the niches that you're getting a lot of traction in, in your business in, uh, in Dartmouth? In yeah, the so when we first started, it was one client in particular who uh, I was actually consulting with another security company after I was I was I left source and this client called us in for a meeting and we thought, uh oh, what's going on? Because normally he only would call if there's something happening and he wants to. And, and it was him that said, hey, why don't you and Michelle start your own company? I'm not happy with what things the way things are going with this other one. Cool. And this other company was actually closing down anyways. So um, so our. We started as an event security company. I mean, because that was the venues that, that we got right yeah. away. Okay, can um, you give me an example of an event? Like, uh, like, a, like uh, just give me an example so we can get a context of, of how you evolved. Yeah, so um, so this venue in particular hosts sporting events and community events. Um, so like uh -huh. hockey games, um, okay, got it. university level. Um, we, we do a lot of community events where it might be, you know, a fundraising dance or uh, a, a certain... A festival of some kind or it could even be a mini concert um i mean we've done large concerts up to six thousand people attending um you know 50 some guard call out we call them uh we've done 
large events like the WWE coming into town and, and we provide security for that. But that's where it started. And then it became a, kind of became a, an event security company. Okay. We, we managed to uh, bring on most of the larger venues here in the Halifax region. And we were their sole security provider. There, there are other companies out there that do the same thing. And sometimes relationships with certain clients that they have will want to use the other company, which is fine. We're, we're totally, we were totally fine with that. But um, that's how we started. And, and then from there, I always said I, w- I didn't want to stay in one vertical. Um, yes. I, I, but I still wanted to be, I wanted to stay community based. And so we, you know, we got involved with a lot of different community organizations and, and, um, but talk about that. Uh, so when you say you get involved with a lot of community organization, what's that part of your marketing? We've, or we've given back. Your- we've, we've given back, um, you know, like boys and girls club and different sporting uh, teams sometimes. Um, and just most recently, uh, actually, before Christmas, before that, the, what is it? The fourth wave of COVID we had yes, sir. Um, a friend of mine had put out a, he's like, he's coaching a basketball team and he said he was looking for fundraising help to get the uniforms for the kids. And I private messaged him and I'm like, what do you need? And he told me, and I said, we'll cover the whole thing. Nice. And, and, and um, you know, in that, that for us, we want to give back to the community. The community has been good with us and we want to give back. And, and we're also that whole, where I say, I want to change the status quo. If we're working in the community, I want the community to see our uniform, our, our logo and yeah. associate us with not just being the security guard who's enforcing rules on the property. We want them to see that we're actually involved in the community as well. So you, um, you know, when I, when I think back to the days when events happened for me, I went to high school, Prince Andrew high school, and there was always the police officer at the dances. How do you, you know, how, how do you integrate the great service you do with the great service that the local city police does? How do you, how do you, how, how do you operate together and, and I'm more interested in, do you have meetings with them? Do you talk to them about what's going on? That type of relationship. Because you're, you're kind of in a similar game. You just get paid differently. Definitely. We, we are. We're dealing with the same people. We're de- we're, actually, we were fortunate before COVID. We are really heavily involved in a lot of the schools. Um, one school in particular, we're actually their actual school security. We're in the school every day. Yeah. And then that, that branched out to their hockey games and their proms and their graduations and word got out. And then we, you know, at one time, I think we had about 10 different high schools that we worked at for all their Thank events. Um, so we right there alone, we established rapport and relations with the school resource officers, which was good for us. And, and then there are certain communities that we're in now where we're, we might be providing apartment security, whatever we, we actually do get in touch with the community officer and, and, and introduce ourselves and have meetings. And I know one site in particular is, is a, a site in the North end of Halifax where we're there 24 hours a day. And we have a supervisor there who's constantly uh, communicating with the, with the local um, community officers and, okay. you know, cool. and, and it, it's, yeah, it, it works out great. I don't want to say that we're a community policing unit, but we, I call it community security. Yeah, sure. And, and we, you know, this one community in particular, we've gotten involved with like candidate celebrations. And if something's happening in the neighborhood, we usually get word of it and we get invited and we, we attend, you know, and then they see the uniform, not just in that, that enforcement capacity. They see us as, oh, this is the friendly security who's in the neighborhood and can help us. That's an interesting point. So I know when I started the chef business a long time ago, um, I, I always had my business partner show up to things in his uniform, even if it was meetings. Are, are, is that something that you bring to your your presence in the marketplace? I mean, you mentioned you, Michelle, you're wearing your uniform. <laughs> so do you really dive into that? Talk about branding. That's what I'm getting to. How you brand yourself into the community you've talked about some of those things but can you talk about other things you use to brand uh, yeah, i mean the uniform is a big part and actually yep. i'm normally even right now i would normally be in uniform 
Um, you know, I just I just recently had surgery in my hand, so okay, right it's on. hard to get it's hard to get the boots up and do up yeah, the really. duty belt and stuff. So I've just got some loose fitting clothes on. But usually, if I'm out in the community uh, visiting sites, I'm in full uniform. Um, I've gone to sites where people have seen, and, and it's it's a different uniform. It's a it's a white shirt versus a gray shirt that our staff yeah. are, so they can tell that we're a little we're different. We're in a different role, and uh, and we have. Um, um, like different markings and insignia that show that we're in a ranking position. Um, and um, yeah, our, our uniform is a big part of our branding. And, and here, another part of our uniform, and it's something else that we've done a little different, is <clears throat> we adjust our uniform based on the site. And that started because back when we were just starting and we were doing these, these events, these, these venues, we were doing corporate events as well. And we started out in black t-shirts. I mean, that's okay. <laughs> that's all we could afford at the time. Yeah, right on. And, and, and one of our clients approached us after and like, you guys did a great job, but the feedback was you look like bouncers. And this, yeah, was, right. a black, this was a black tie event, you know, some fundraising auction site. And we looked like bouncers. And I'm like, you're right. Yeah. And, and right away, I got this idea of a nice corporate looking uniform. And that's where, and everything that we do has to be approved. It's like we have to, apply to the department of justice and say, here's our idea. Here's what we want to do. Okay. Um, Cause a certain size of lettering, certain markings have to be on. So we, um, we were approved a black dress vest that has our, our markings, and our logos on it. And then for those kind of corporate events, our, our guards are in dress pants, white shirt, black tie, nice dress vest. Nice. And, um, <laughs> the clients love it. They're like, no one's ever done that for us. No one's ever adjusted to make, cause they, they have to look good too. Right. Yeah, I not love just, it. Yeah, it's not just on security that looks good, look good because the way we look affects how they look to their clients. Oh, 100%, man. 100%. And that's, uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's all part of the branding piece. So, and let's try to talk and you touched, you talked about, you said the guards loved it. And that, so I want to talk about your guards. I'm going to assume that a large percentage of them are, I'll call them freelancers. They're on call, they're part time. They're not necessarily for the full time. Is that fair to say? Well, pre COVID, that's what it was like. Yes. COVID hit. I've got, we've gone from 20, maybe a dozen or 20 permanent full time working staff to nearly 100 right now. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, it, it's, it's crazy. Obviously, now COVID has changed a lot, put a lot of restrictions on certain sites and, yeah. and yeah. Um, more of a necessity now. People are, need security for certain yeah, things, of course. Screening, of course. screening at doors. Um, but, but we've grown, um, our verticals have changed. We're not so much just an event company anymore. Now we're in apartment buildings full-time we're in nursing homes. We're, um, in office towers and that. So, you know, the, the more, and I think a lot, and actually uh, most of it, I would say 95% of our growth has actually been word of mouth, which has been amazing. Yeah. That's, that's um, lovely. Well, you're doing all the right things because if the word of mouth wasn't good, you sure wouldn't be growing the way you are. But so, yeah. you know, I, so I just want to I want to relate back to that point about the guards uniforms, because I got to think based on what you were just saying, the way you make your customers feel is important. But also the pride that your staff, your guards feel in wearing a uniform like that has got to be part of part of the part of like, I'm going to call it retention strategy you've got because they're respected in the roles that they're performing for uh, for a uh, car. Yeah, definitely. And, and we like, because we have the different levels of uniforms um, I'll get a lot of time. So we have the majority of our staff will wear a black polo and it's just a plain black polo with our logo on it to, to the uniform shirt with that, with that, well, you can't see it with that patch on it. Um, yeah. And it's more if I don't know if you want to say I don't want to say the word police, but it is a, a uniform look. Sure, they absolutely. Really like, uh -huh. They really like the look of that uniform. You know, you you you're, you you know a lot of them wear the duty belts with you know whatever pouches they have on them. Yeah. Um, some of our sites we we equipped our staff with um, safety vests, like stab a stab resistant or a bullet resistant vest, just because of the locations they're in and some of the things that we deal with. And they they really like that that look, and it's a look that's not huge in Nova Scotia. Yeah. I, kind of, I kind of brought that with me from Ontario because if you go to Ontario, the, the, the security guards look amazing, and 
right. in Ontario. So I wanted to bring that here. Cool. And, you know, our cars are pretty high profile, our patrol cars and, and people like that look. So there is, I think there is that pride. I know I'm, and I'm not just because I'm the owner. I, I love putting a uniform on and going. Oh, dude, out. you look you, you look cool. I'm gonna tell you first of all, you look cool, but yeah. you look professional. And you, here's the other thing that is so interesting: you don't look intimidating. And I know that's a bridge between you know you've got a position to play of security, but also approachability. And uh, I think that that really relates uh, big. So. Talk about some, let's take back to your journey, you and Michelle, from the, where you were in the beginning to where you are now. What are some lessons that you learned along the way that you say, you'd say to new entrepreneurs, uh, you know, these are, these are some things, two things that we said that I, I would either change or that I was very focused in on and it was successful for me. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one because in the beginning, I think any person who starts a business just wants to take on whatever they can, mm -hmm. you know, make money any way we can. But as as we've grown, like we, we turn away a lot of work now and it's not because we're, we have, we could do it, but it's, it might be a one-off here and there right? or, or it might be something that's, um, it could be a contract that, several companies are bidding on. And when you look at the way the score sheet runs on that RFP or that RFQ, they're really looking at lowest bidder, right? Yeah. Right. And I see the scoring and I'm like, when I know they're just looking at cost, yeah. I don't even bother because I know what we're putting out. I know the level of service we're putting out. We pay our staff a little more than the industry average. And I'm hoping in the next, we're working on a plan now where we're trying to get that up actually much higher. Okay. Um, so I need to be able to charge a certain amount. So I've learned now, and, and I'm not afraid to say, here's, a, here's our rate. And, you know, if you don't like it, then go somewhere else. Cause, yeah. um, we know, we know what we're putting out and we know that we're trying to take care of our staff and, and, um, you know, you, you, you kind of get what you pay for. Right. And were you consistent with that from the very beginning? Is it fair to say yeah. that that was, that was a so, philosophy? No. So no, I wasn't. And I kind of wish I was because it's sometimes, especially events, like if, and if it's a large event and you're the lowest person going in on this event, an event's a lot of work. Like if it's a large call out, like a festival right. or, something, you know, you're looking at 30, 40 guards, you're hiring new staff, you're training, you're getting uniforms and equipment. You do the event for four or five hours and then you're done. And, yeah. and honestly, at the end of the day, you, you might, make a few dollars and you yeah. know, after you pay your staff. So yeah, we've, we've been kind of strategic on what we've gone after and what we've taken. But you've learned that lesson along the way, right? And you've learned right. what you do, what you should be focused in on. One of the things you've talked about, um, and, uh, and I know, you know, this is important, but you said it's a, it's a one-off and that's one thing that recurring revenue, a, monthly or regular contract that it's 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 so much more enjoyable when you can get a contract or a relationship with a client that keeps coming back for again and again and again is that fair to say that that's that's the type of client that you're now mainly engaging with absolutely um for sure and it keeps our staff employed full-time well, yeah. right Mm -hmm. um, we still have clients that might have a one-off every year, but they are, you know, people we started with back in the day and, and we stay with them. We're just not really taking on new business that are one-off. Um, yeah. and we're still a little bit involved in the school board. not as much, but, um, I think now as things are starting to open up with all the mandates and that, I think next year we'll be back to, you know, the dozen or so schools that we had and doing all their, all their events and their, their games and that. So cool. So tell me, um, tell me about COVID. Tell me about some of the things that, that, I mean, I got, I'm only surmising, but it had to be, I mean, you just talked about the staff. I mean, how did you adjust operationally when all of a sudden this demand came your way? <laughs> really unexpectedly, I got, I mean, you, you know, you, nobody knew what was going on with COVID. How did you, how did you, you and Michelle, make the magic happen when COVID pushed at you so fast, so hard. Yeah. So to start, I mean, the, when it first hit, 
I honestly, it was the scariest time in our life because we went from, you know, and I, I almost remember it was like a Wednesday when things were talking about closing down. And then the yeah. Thursday, the email started coming in. Hey, this event was canceled. This event's canceled. This one's right. canceled. And then Friday, it was pretty much a shutdown. And right. we're like, God. what are we going to do? And I remember telling Michelle, I'm like, you know what? It's Friday night. Let's take the weekend to just take it easy. We know things are shutting down. We might end up going back to where it's Michelle and I and a few of our staff just working yeah, the shit. Right. Yeah. Covered. Yeah, I love that. And, and actually, um, I got to pause you there for a sec, but yeah. because that's an important lesson is that because you play in the game, because you know the environment, because you know customers, you know the nuances, you can always rely on yourself as the man and the woman in the mirror to keep your business going because it's a roller coaster ride. So I love that you had that attitude and you're able to kind of calm the waters over the weekend because of that mindset. So thanks for thanks for referencing that point. Yeah, okay, sure. came out of the weekend from the COVID. So, uh, and then, you know, I think it was like the Monday came and like I, I know some people in, in the industry and, you know, we phone calls and emails were coming around and say, hey, we might need some security for this. Are you guys, you know, interested? And I'm like, absolutely. Like I've got 20 or 30 staff right now who don't have work. Um, so yeah, and it was like Tuesday and all of a sudden, bang, we had one site call us up. I need, I need six guards to put a doors for screening. Yeah. Like sure thing, we can do it. And then from there, you know, the word of mouth stuff happened, you know, another, another nursing home would call and say, who are you guys using for security? Cause we need them out of their doors now. Oh, yes. we're using our home, you know? yeah. and it went from there. So at one point, I think we had, you know, a dozen or more guards just doing the, the screening 24 hours a day at, at different nursing it's homes and, and offices. Yeah, it was crazy. And then, so that led into, you know, we we're doing a great job with that. And our clients were very happy with the staff that we were providing them to getting an invite to bid on a, on a, a huge RFP for, for 24 hour security at a, at a nursing home. And um, we went up against three or well, two nationals and one of the bigger companies locally. And we're just, you know, Michelle and Ben mom and pop jail car security. And uh, we won, we won the bid. Nice. And why did you think you why did you think you won the bid? I think it's just we don't there's no smoke and mirrors in what we do. Right. Here's what we can do it, how we're gonna do it, and we guarantee this is how it's gonna be done. There's no right. you know, there's no flashy, you know, pictures and cards and, and things in our in our RFPs. We put it exactly what we're gonna do. And there was there was a lot of phone calls and interviews in between. It took about a month or so before they made a decision. And uh, I, yeah, and we, we won the bid and we, we've been there just, I think we're going into our third, well, we're going to be going into our third year. That's beautiful. Uh, well, I, I got to think that, uh, that even with the, the kind of the, I'll call it the, 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 the slowdown of the momentum, I got to think that this ride's going to be good for you for, for a while to go. I, I believe it will. Yeah, I, I do too. Yeah, I, I really do. I think there's some opportunity there. So tell me about, we're kind of heading in the end of the conversation. First of all, congratulations to you and Michelle. Congratulations to your team. Thank goodness you, you're in Atlanta, Canada. We're just thrilled to have you in Atlanta, Canada, uh, doing what it is you do. Um, so talk about that piece. What has it been like to do business in the in, in HRM, Halifax Regional Municipality? Uh, as a, as a, as, as business people. I think personally, we, I mean, we're, we're so happy that we did this. It's funny. We kind of think like, what if we did this 20 years ago type of, you yeah. know, you always wonder, we're so happy we did what we did when we did it. Um, and, and business in the HRM has been amazing. Um, you, you know, the, sometimes you hear like, Oh no, it's so small. There's no growth. I think any business right now that opens up in Nova Scotia has a huge opportunity um, to do well. The, the province is growing. I mean, there's so much empty space in Nova Scotia. I can only th see amazing things happening. Um, and when you say empty space, you're talking geographic space. Yeah. I mean, got it. You, you got Halifax, Dartmouth and the little surrounding boroughs. And then, you know, 10 minutes outside of there, it's, it's wide open. 
There's yeah. just so much land and, and you, and I've seen the growth. I've only been here since 2015. The growth here has been like just the housing has changed. Everything's changing. And, and we're happy to be here. We're not going anywhere. We're, we're actually, we've talked about expanding outside of Nova Scotia now um, into the other Atlantic provinces. Nice. I, I get calls all the time. I um, bet you do. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's something we're thinking about, but we're not going to grow too fast. We want to make sure that we don't lose control of what we have right now. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, the the turtle won the race, dude. The turtle won the race. It wasn't the rabbit that won the race. Slow and steady, slow and steady. And so you've obviously adopted that too. Ben, uh, how do people hang out with you, man? Because I mean, that's one of the one of the reasons that I was thrilled to have a conversation with you today because I've been a fan of your business and uh, and you. I haven't had the, the privilege of meeting Michelle yet, but I, I really recommend that people hang out with you and I'd say follow you, learn about what you're doing because you're very prevalent. Uh, you're very active on social media and so on and what it is you're doing, not only as the uh, as one of the owners of, of your company, but also as a as a as a business person and a community contributor. So what's what, how do people one find out uh, where's Joel Carr? What's uh, what's the website address we can connect with? And any any other ways to hang out with you, my man? Yeah, so I mean, we're we've got our website, jalcarsecurity.com. Uh, okay. We're on, we're on Facebook under Jalcar Security. For me personally, LinkedIn is is a huge huge uh, way to connect. But yeah. I mean, I, my my social media platform on all everything, Facebook, Instagram. I mean, it's wide open. I don't I don't private anything. Um, I pretty much connect with everybody. Um, I have a personal Instagram. I think it's JSS underscore security. It's it's both personal and business stuff. I just mix it up. Yeah. Um, I want people to see who, who I am and what I do. Yeah, totally. But that's um, the community piece in you do. That's yeah. the community piece. And then you have built yourself being a part of the community as well as the business. So Exactly. So. And, and, you know, we didn't touch on anything about past, but I, I like mentoring people. Like I try okay. to do that with my staff now. I mean, you know, without getting into too much details, like almost 10 years ago, Michelle and I were almost homeless. You know, like right. we really, really both of us have changed our mindset and said we we hit rock bottom. We don't ever want to be there again. And yes, we sir. did what we had to do to get where we are now. And and um I share that sometimes with people you know, That's on a private brilliant. level. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah, you know, because there's too much glamour on the on the outside, but there's a lot of those hard stories uh, behind the scenes, and I think they need to be told. One of the ones I tell is I've had depression two or three times, and mm -hmm. I don't mind talking about that publicly because it just reinforces, you know, average guys like you and I have had those tough times, yep. and we've been able to move forward with them, so... I love that you've uh, you've mentioned that, and uh, and again, people can think can learn a lot from adversity. Can come great, great opportunity if you have the right mindset. Love mindset, it. Mindset's huge. Yeah, huge, huge. Yeah. All right, my man. Well, listen. Thank you so much for being on the Atlantic piece of of Canada's podcast. Been great to hang out with you. Uh, I know the next time I see you, you're probably going to have your uniform back on. So best. Yeah. With your recovery, uh, what happened with your hand? Did you did you uh, did you cut it or something? No, well, no, I had carpal tunnel surgery. Uh, so pretty pretty basic, but there was a little bit of complications in in it, and um, so the recovery is taking a little longer. And cool. being that I'm right handed, everything I do, you know, the mouse and you know, even tying yeah. up tying up a pair of boots right now is very difficult. So. Well, you got to come up with a better story than that, man. Make it a big story. Make it one of those yeah. big fish stories. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like right, said, brother, no no smoking mirrors so to me. <laughs> I appreciate your time today. Congrats again to both of you and your team. And uh, and we'll look forward to continuing to watching your journey. Cheers, Thanks. brother. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.